What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering, and uh, I'm going to try to divert from any adjacent content to everything going on outside right now. I think, well, I'm just going to. Uh, I've been covering it all week, and I don't care if people think it's uh, bad, but I'm taking a break, and I'm giving my viewers the day off. You know, I think we all get the point. Uh, and uh, I'm going to try to increase more of the standard type coverage now. I keep my eye on everything going on out there too. But um, look, it's Friday. It's my channel. I'm going to do what I want to do. And uh, also, I know a large percentage of you uh, are just viewers, passive viewers of the channel, almost 40%. So uh, if you haven't subscribed, I hope today's the day that you'll hit that little red button and uh, subscribe. It's right below the video. It just makes finding my videos easier to do now. Ethan Klein, age three, age three, has gone from one of the most beloved, universally beloved, to having a large contingent of people that strongly dislike him. And that isn't to diminish his many fans. Hundreds of thousands of people still strongly enjoy Ethan Klein. Many people still watch the H3 podcast. And every time I do a video on... Um, Ethan Klein, that's critical of him, it is strongly disliked and, uh, you know, more than my other videos, which means to me, uh, there are still people who, you know, really want to defend him. And you know what? I've got to say, in the whole him versus Gokenru situation, I think uh, his response was mediocre, effective, um, you know, to me, as an outsider looking in, uh, bringing all your famous friends on to tell to to you know make them say that they're not mad at you is a little bit of a weird way to do it. But also, I don't know how else he could have done it. Um, getting PewDiePie to come in and say I'm not mad, I guess, is a thing. But what is Pewds gonna say? Is he gonna say no? Uh, is he going to start another feud with a man that has apparently the power to have entire channels re removed quite easily? You know, I don't know. But, you know, nonetheless, Ethan still has his phantom. And really, through all of this, Ela has remained relatively untouched by all the drama, which I think is good. But yesterday, just on the heels of finally kind of putting the Gokaneru situation behind him, you know, whether or not you felt he had absolved himself by his rep response to it. I thought he did respond to it. He was clearly butthurt about it. And um, I think that's an understandable emotion. There were things in the original video that just weren't correct. And there were things in the original video that framed him probably worse than he really was. However, there were a lot of things that were very true in that video. And, um, you know, what are you going to do? He responded. He still seemed real salty about it. He did not seem... Uh, to have any level of real contrition to me, but that's neither here nor there. Now, yesterday, uh, there were some interesting tweets going going around, and um, I thought it was funny because, you know, I think that there's kind of this, you know, <coughs> excuse me, unwritten code in be between YouTubers that you just follow, What you know, and some people could say, well, I don't do that. I'm a renegade. Okay, cool, whatever. You don't have to, all right? But there are certain things that you don't, that one YouTuber does, does not do to another. Uh, probably the first and foremost would probably be flagging their channel or uh, doing like a copyright strike takedown scenario. You just don't do it. Now, if somebody's gonna upload a you know full edited version of your video as a re-upload, even I won't strike that down. In fact, many times I'll tell people not only to do it, but to monetize it because I don't care. Um, but uh, some people don't like it. I suppose in that scenario, you could make uh, an argument for it. But Leafy came out yesterday and uh, tweeted that he had been receiving uh, many new strikes. 14 hours saying, uh, currently sitting at two community guideline strikes, Team YouTube, putting the channel close to being banned. If you guys could reach out and help me resolve this, surely, surely there would be some middle ground. He would go on to say, I believe H3H3 H3 Productions is trying to get my channel deleted. I had to private all my videos and I just got two channel strikes today, this is prior to this, for quote, harassment on my new videos. Another strike on my channel gets deleted. The videos that received the strikes were the H3H3 H3 Productions one and the I Am Alex ones. 
nearly at the exact same time. Again, I don't know if H3, H3 Productions, but yeah, this is my current situation. Team YouTube, both videos were hardly crude, but not explaining details. Fun website. Uh, and, you know, this is coming after on June 3rd saying, I would love to see Leafy try to exist in today's current landscape. Like the content that he was making then would never fly on YouTube today. And now you have to adapt, overcome and uh, the fact like that. You can't even curse now. Like, I don't know. That was a reference to H3, H3 Productions, uh, quote, uh, about Leafy. And then conveniently, uh, you know, the very next day he gets hit with two community guideline strikes. And, uh, you know, there are implications here. I mean, I think the problem with uh, Ethan is that he doesn't acknowledge the fact that he very clearly has connections at YouTube. You don't get Susan Wojcicki to show up at your house uh, for a podcast. Do I think he has the woman on speed dial? Probably not. But I also have seen uh, many scenarios in the past where he will complain that a video got demonetized and YouTube re re resolves it within 20 minutes of when he tweets about it. Versus people like me, when you get that yellow dot, it takes a couple of days. And then even then, it's difficult to know how things will turn out. So, you know, certainly... Ethan is unaware of his, um, uh, I don't know, like, here's the thing, here's the thing, here's what I think. Do I think Ethan Klein has ever explicitly, explicitly uh, gone and, 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 and with like tears running down his face and asks his friend at Team YouTube, someone at YouTube to, to take down a channel or video? I don't believe that's ever happened. Uh, do I believe that there are people at YouTube that want to protect him? Yes. Yes, I do. Uh, that isn't his fault, though. It's their bad acting. You know, ultimately, even if Ethan Klein was going around and flagging videos, uh, I think that ultimately somebody at YouTube has to make the decision whether or not uh, to take a video down. And if they are giving him preferential treatment, that's not his fault either. That's whoever that employee is, just like we saw with Susie Liu. Um, now, a good friend of mine, Count Denkula, you know, we do <laughs> we do a podcast together every Wednesday. It's it's the the little the least known about uh, podcasts on the internet. And uh, he brought up a good point just a few hours ago, which is really what brought this all to my attention. Um, retweeting Ethan Klein saying and nothing of value was lost. Now, I didn't see that, but he said, you defended me in the past over my joke, Ethan, even though you didn't like it. We don't all have to like each other on YouTube, but when a YouTuber's channel is at risk, we should help each other. And I agree with that. He goes on to say, YouTube is a uh, poo platform that only cares about a few creators at the top who make the money. Everyone else is treated like second-class citizens and judged against by the clearly biased internal review team. The only way people have lasted is by uniting and making lots of noise. Very good point. You know, he's 100% right. Dank is always on when it comes to, to free speech and, and other things like that. But it, it, I thought it was interesting that, you know, while Ethan is melting down about uh, everything going on outside right now, fanning the flames of everybody... He takes a moment to say, and nothing of value was lost. Laughing about Leafy uh, having to delete his channel. Look, if you don't like the guy's content, I'm, I'm no Leafy content fan. I, I've said before, um, call me a boomer or call me a fuddy-duddy. Both would probably be right. But I always thought m most of his content uh, was, it was funny, but would also kind of s just get really mean-spirited. And I didn't like that. Um, you know, you can roast somebody, but, you know, talking about their physical appearance or being just really mean about it just didn't land for me. But there's no denying that that man amassed more views in one year than I will amass in an entire lifetime. And you've got to respect the hustle. Uh, but then he goes on to say, meanwhile, his friends are begging me to help out poor Leafy. <coughs> Bash me publicly and beg me privately. I don't know who this is exactly, but now he's leaking DMs. I don't know who this person is. Maybe you, the viewers. Hey there, it's Jonathan. I know we haven't talked in quite a while. You might remember me from the British friend group. 
I'm reaching out because I still talk to Leafy here and there, and he wanted and he wanted to get in touch with you and see if you could talk to him at all. His channel is One Strike Away from Termination, and one of these videos is about you. I know for a fact that you didn't personally take it down, but I know maybe you, you can help him in a way, if you'd want to. His new Twitter is Leafy. Anyways, I thought it was good. Uh, you know, it's interesting to me because there's never a better time for a redemption arc especially if you're under the specter of being strike happy and thin skinned then coming out to defend uh somebody's roast video of you you know what i mean like if there if people thought you were a dmca person and you uploaded a single video tomorrow and said look i don't agree with these strikes I don't think we should be, you know, the moral arbiter of what's mean or not. Uh, yeah, it was making fun of me. It bothered me. But please, you know, I don't I don't stand for this kind of thing and blah, 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 blah. It would be universally loved. Like for such a, a, a careful branding guy like Ethan, can't believe he doesn't see this easy, easy W. Even if he doesn't mean it, it's like the world's easiest W. Uh, then this guy said, yeah, just now. I told him I didn't think you took his video down and that maybe you, uh, if he got in touch with you, perhaps you could help him. Essentially, you know, using some of those YouTube content, uh, you know, uh, YouTube um, contacts that he clearly has. Uh, you know, I think it's funny to me that, um, you know, Ethan is probably the most popular and most thin skinned person on YouTube. And that's pretty sad. You've really got to separate the two uh to me it all lines up with his move to la from new york but maybe it just lines up with the money maybe it just lines up with old age maybe it lines up with just having had enough of it um but nonetheless this is a great moment for ethan to be able to step up and not be petty but i think he chose the low road here which isn't exactly what i would have chosen do you think ethan uh, maybe got involved and um, had these videos taken down because here's the thing that, you know, I think here's the most likely scenario is if Ethan was involved, here's how it goes. He doesn't beg for a video to get down. He taken down. He doesn't flag it uh, with his main channel. Of course he doesn't do that. He doesn't even have alts that he flags with. What he probably does is he probably got a buddy inside of YouTube, sends him a video and says something like, lol, and that's all it takes. That's how these, you know, quid pro quo deals get done. There's no email out there that of Ethan demanding a video getting taken down. There's no email or flag history on his main channel where he flags a video down. That's not how these deals get done when you've had the CEO of the company at your house. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm looking forward to reading the comments in the comment section down below. And we'll talk to you again real soon.